Hey everybody, Tom here with Permaculture Wilmington. Check out the Facebook group. We've got a, a bunch of people joining. There's a lot of interest in this kind of stuff these days. But we've got some recycled waste and we are the ones recycling it right now. So we've got cardboard and shredded paper and there's some other packing paper that we've got in here. But these are all wonderful materials for mushrooms to eat if you want to grow them in your yard. So all we have to do here is, I'm going to get a little of this water out, um, but then we're going to put the, the uh, mycelium in that I have, which is right over here. We've already got it. We, we actually cultured this um, and had it colonize the grain. With, these are oats. So now we're going to break this up and we're going to make a little slurry out of what we're doing. Um, and then all these little inoculation points, all the oats that are in here, those are the inoculation points are going to mix in with the slurry and then we're going to put it uh, on top of some straw and some oak. <laughs> Alright guys. Here we go. Everybody's got their own way of doing this. Um, but this is what I think makes the most sense because we want to get as much of the mycelium on as much material and kind of multiply it before we make our beds so we can get the most out of what we've created. I'm um, sorry about the cars going by. Shouldn't be anybody going around. I mean, it's like uh, it's supposed to be quarantine or something. I heard about that. But anyway, so. Um, we got some mycelium here and we're just going to kind of scatter it around. It's on oat grain. So the mycelium's going to kind of smear off the oat grain and little particles of it are going to go all over the cardboard and the shredded paper and it's going to help us multiply what we've created here so that we can grow a big successful mushroom bed, which is our goal, right? I mean, that's that's why we put all this effort into doing what we're doing if you're doing what I'm doing. That's for sure. Um, but I think that's good. We want to save some to, we want to make layers. So um, I'm going to save a little bit and we're going to sprinkle it around. And it doesn't take much. I mean, it just a, a, a very small amount, micro amount of this stuff can form an organism and grow and you'll have mushrooms in no time. Alrighty, so here we go. We've got our bag of grain spawn here with one cap mycelium. Um, and I got this from Lenny, Lenny Rockwell at um, Mycelium Emporium. He's got some good strains, man. I like that that whole selection he's got. It's really awesome. But um, we're going to take the cardboard and start first. So hop right over here. And we've already got some straw down here. And there's actually already a couple layers of cardboard. Um, I've got a lot of uh, um, oyster mycelium around. Oysters are just so easy to grow. But the reason we're doing it right now is because this is a giant oak tree. It's going to, I mean, it's going to get bigger. It's kind of young for what an oak tree can do. But um, as far as oak trees go, they're, they're, uh, they have a symbiotic relationship with wine cap mushrooms. So um, they, the uh, starches come from the, the tree to the mushroom and in exchange, the sugars come down and in exchange the mycelium, the mushroom will actually, or the, uh, the mycelium, the mushroom member is the fruit. So the mycelium, the, fruit, the uh, organism, um, gives the tree immunity properties. So the enzymes that it creates have all kinds of immunity properties and a lot of animals in nature use their, their immunity properties like bees for instance without um, mycelium and the enzymes that come from the mycelium my understanding is bees wouldn't have the immunity they have and uh, I think Paul Stamets is the one that's bringing the bees back using mushroom enzymes which is really cool giving them immunity uh, boosting their immunity by, by feeding them enzymes from mushrooms fascinating stuff but we're just going to keep going here layering um, putting a little cardboard down we want to scatter it out to again make the most of it um, and then we're just going to put some uh, wood chips right over the top of that so a few more here and let's see I think this should be pretty good for the first layer and now we're going to do some oak Oak down here. Excellent. This is the twigs and the chips and everything. 
and it, unfortunately it's fresh I should wait a little long a little while a couple weeks maybe two um, but I have an HOA and I have neighbors that are already asking questions about my wood chips so you know we got to be be careful and maintain the peace it's very important because peace is a, a part of health you know, mental mental uh, your mental state having a peaceful state of mind um, affects you directly in all kinds of ways um, so we, we definitely want to make sure we maintain the peace and not create n negative tension um, all right guys well this is going to be our second layer here so get this kind of spread out so it's not a hump and there may be a pea or two that gets covered up here we try to use all the space we have to grow um, okay just make it so you can't see the cardboard anymore it doesn't have to be super special i don't think the mushrooms really care if it's pretty and that's the great part about permaculture is you know we take the materialism out so it doesn't have to be beautiful it can be natural and um, functional I think is, is the, the best way I like to my girlfriend calls it utilitarian before I started learning permaculture she said everything I did was utilitarian because um, I just like to utilize space I mean that's that's how I was raised and that's kind of how I am my mom would say uh, we are how we are, and the world is as it is. So, one of those little things. All right, guys, we got. Um, we're gonna put down some more. See, I don't see a whole lot of mycelium on here, so I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit just to get it. This is the the main coating here. We've got a bottom, so this is the middle. Um, we're gonna put some more wood chips. Give these guys a nice home. Now I like to wet the cardboard beforehand because you know the if you put in dry cardboard and then put the mycelium right up on it, it's gonna dry out your little buddies. They're not gonna be able to do their work, eat what they need to eat, and grow how they want to grow. And we want to make it as easy for them as possible. This is the shady side of the tree. So I'm trying to, to get most of it on the shady side of this oak tree. But we have another oak tree too, so saving my bullets. utilizing all the space I can around the base of as many trees as I can underneath this oak tree. So I'm just going to mix this up in here around the base and then get some more wood chips on top. Gotta get it really wet down here, guys, so all the mycelium grow really well. We don't want, to, want it to dry out. They need moisture. That's our microbiology. Moisture is highly important.
putting this stuff everywhere. I want my mushrooms to come up. Well, here we are guys um, it is the end of the day a beautiful evening I mean just gorgeous out here it has been an absolutely wonderful day making a mushroom garden with oak wood chips I just wanted to make a point to add that um you don't want to make them too the piles too big in terms of layering especially if it's fresh like this you need to let it sit until everything dries out really well because what I'm doing right now is trying to make my HOA happy um, but it really this is nitrogen and carbon which is basically a big compost pile so if all the green that's mixed in you see if we piled it too big that's still got a lot of green it was just cut a couple days ago so um, it can heat up and actually kill the tree if you make it too high but I only put two maybe three thin layers down with cardboard uh, in addition and paper which is also more carbon um, it's actually just carbon I believe because they you know they've uh, put it in water and cooked it and turned it into a pulp and basically there's just nothing to it anymore except uh, lignin I believe so it's pretty much just carbon right now um, which that's the paper so what I did was uh, sprinkle a lot of mycelium between the paper layers and then used uh, water to just keep that nice and moist so that way they'll be really happy in their new home. Um, but I've got this whole area, as you can see, uh, very thick. This is, well, not very thick, because like I said, thin layers. Um, but in terms of, of uh, thicker than it was, it's nice and nice and cushiony. I like it. It's a good cushiony floor. Uh, very, it, it feels very much like a forest floor. And that's the whole point of this permaculture stuff, um, is that we, we want to imitate nature. And I really love this concept because it just makes me feel so good to know that I'm doing something good for the property that I own. I'm putting back into it and helping it become stronger, which is, it's just going to do more for me. It's going to allow me to, to eat more food, to grow more food. Uh, one last point I wanted to make, guys, is that this pile that was left, it actually did have a little pine in it. Now that I'm getting into it, I see in the front down here, uh, must have been something the guy did previously like a small job because there was just a little bit of it but there was some pine in there so instead of putting it under the oak tree um, I want that for the mycelium and the the pine trees are actually antifungal so you will sorry about the cars so you will never find an oyster mushroom um, or a lot of the choice edibles they just don't grow on pine trees because there's they have an antifungal compound in them so what I did was bring it out in front, and this is kind of an eyesore with the, you know, we've been using straw for a long time just because it falls from the pine trees and it's so abundant and easy um, that it, it does do, it, it provides some shade on the soil, but I had no idea how just basically nothing it's doing right now. It's not providing any nutrition. Um, the soil underneath is dry. So, I mean, it's just sand underneath there. You know, this is doing nothing. So I started using straw and then I saw the water retention uh, ability of, of wheat straw and uh, after using it for mushrooms and then putting it in the in the yard and understanding the nutrition and, and how it benefits fungus um, super awesome for the yard guys highly recommend that and now I'm learning to put um, wood chips especially oak wood chips or hardwood wood chips on top of that to keep the slug populations down because the slugs like to get in between the blades of straw so um, and that's pretty much where they 
colonize and propagate themselves, breed, all that good stuff, and then you've got a million of them all over the yard. And if you have brassica plants, man, that's just no good. That's that's no good sauce. So um, we, what we did was decide to do the wood chip thing. And um, a couple guys, like uh, there's a guy, Mark Fogelman, I think his name is, on um, North Carolina Gardening, and he's really promoting the wood chips in the garden. And I, I just, I love it. I love that someone's doing that because it's so beneficial. Um, but yeah, guys, so pine is where I put where the sun is going to hit um, because mushrooms need shade. So all the trees that are heavily shading the ground, I'm, especially the oaks, I'm putting the the, um, the mulch underneath those and layering with the mycelium. So just to give you guys an idea of what's going on here, we are cooking, cooking along here with our goals.